This has been a lot of good, good field to plow in. Yes. A lot of good things to uh, to turn over and to look upon, to consider. Wanted to highlight a few things that Brother Given said, and also uh, to give you some of my own words and exhorting concerning these things. To begin with, uh, Brother Given said that this miracle was done in the midst of a lot of teaching and also that Christ's miracles were to buttress what he said. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, this is a big point, that Jesus didn't... His miracles were not just like an expo, uh, ju just, to, just to make people wonder yeah. and go home in amazement as to what he can do. To be sure, people did wonder, and they were amazed. We, we're still amazed today at the, at the things that he did. Yeah. But the purpose of the miracles wasn't just to produce a sense of awe. It was actually to produce the beginning of faith. It was to produce inquiry into the one who did Amen. the miracle Amen. and not just create an awe about what was done. So the miracle was done in, in the context of teaching. And so the miracle was a commentary on the miracle worker. Yes. What, what happened, the work, it was, it was testifying of the worker, of the, of the one that did it. And also, he, he, uh, Brother Given brought out very well how that the Lord could linger with His answer to bring faith, to bring faith out of us. And this is a, this is a, this is one of His manners. Yeah. Uh, also, the examples of of uh, would have walked by the boat in the mm -hmm. storm, and would have walked past the house on the road down to down to Emmaus. <clears throat> uh, the Lord, we we will never be uh, disappointed by by. Uh, by pressing forward yes, for, for the answer, amen. or by or by lingering for the blessing. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing uh, uh, some time ago, Brother Given said, uh, "Sometimes people don't just don't linger long enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to stay a little longer. When the Lord showed you something, rest assured that's not the end of what He's got to give you. Mm -hmm. Linger a little longer, and the Lord has uh, greater and bigger things for us. <clears throat> what teaches us to beseech." The Lord is a keen sense of the need. Yeah. Our prayers, yeah. <clears throat> the fervency of our prayers, will be in proportion to our yeah. understanding of our need. Yes. Yeah. So let me say that another Amen. way. If I don't pray much, then I think I don't need much. Yeah. That's that's kind of what it yeah. what it comes down to. So yeah. the people that that the, the woman that pressed through the crowd to touch Jesus, she knew what she needed. Then mm -hmm. this man that came. Probably quite a ways, yeah. And then, and then continue to ask the Lord after his response seemed to be unfavorable. Yeah. He he knew he he had a sense of of what he needed. Yeah. And so we can uh, we can prove our own selves with this that if our if our prayers have lost their fervency, then our heart has lost the sense of its need. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so let us let it, let us often take take inventory of ourselves. And apart from grace, what we're going to find out is our inventory comes up in the red. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. We'll find we'll find that to inventory our own spirits, we're poor in spirit. Amen. To inventory yes. our own Amen. heart, Amen. we're bankrupt before God. Yeah. And then that type of inventory will it'll it'll put the fervency back into our prayers. Yeah. You have to bring your petition from where you are. Don't pretend to see something you don't. Yeah. <laughs> the man that came and said, "God be merciful to me, a sinner." He wasn't pretending. That's right. But the other man that said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other men, he was pretending. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's something that I wanted to add to these things. God doesn't take our profession at face value. Oh, very good. When we say, Lord, Amen. Lord, I, I believe, I know you can do this, mm -hmm. I know you're going to do this, well, the Lord, the Lord knows what we think better than we do. Mm -hmm. And then the, the time, the lingering answer is that time when God yeah. can test faith, like Amen. the point that Brother Given made. Amen. He'll Amen. test the faith, and be sure untested faith. How do you? How can you? How can you be confident in a faith that's never been tested? Yeah. That's right. How, how can you be faith? How can you be confident in the in the structure of an engineer who's who's never been educated in engineering? That's right. How can you be? Mm -hmm. So faith that's untested at best is just beginning faith. Mm -hmm. But there is no seasoned faith or old faith that's never been tested. Mm -hmm. there, there is nothing like that. So don't pretend 
Uh, God, God takes. Uh, God doesn't take things at faith face value. When God tests our faith, it will prove to us the the sufficiency of the faith. When God tests faith, it's not God doing the finding out. He's doing the showing to us. Amen. The Lord, the Lord knows. He he looks. He can look into the heart, and he he can he can show he can uh, tell the end from the beginning. Things aren't hid to him. So when God tests our faith, He's proving to us that if we keep the faith, the faith will keep us. Yeah. Just a couple more things. A nobleman humbled himself before the Lord. Yes. When he came, I hadn't thought of this before. The nobleman was probably used to getting what he... That's right. And remember the, the other man, the, the centurion? Yeah. He told the Lord, he says, Now, I'm one under authority, and when I tell this servant, do this, uh -huh. he does it. Yeah. <laughs> So that man was used to it also. He wasn't used to, to people uh, uh, talking back, so to speak. But So this man, he had to humble himself and make a petition rather than give a command. Yes, amen. This is what he did. Pride, pride hinders prayers just as much as... Proud spirit. This will, this will not avail any, any good to the ones proud. Mm -hmm. So the nobleman humbled himself. Amen. God's glorified by inquiring into what time things began to amend. Mm -hmm. And God's glorified by this. And God, not only is God glorified by it, but our faith will be strengthened by it. We look into those Amen. things more particularly, mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll, become, uh, it'll become a source of strength, a source of refreshment. Mm -hmm. And even, you remember the Lord uh, told... Uh, the children of Israel, when they pass through the Jordan, says, "Take up stones while you're going and build a build an altar." Mm -hmm. And so, when you come by again, and your children say, hey, what, "What meaneth these altars?" As you can tell them, that's when the Lord the Lord brought us by, brought us uh, through the the River Jordan here at this point. And so, see, when you inquire into the into the works of the Lord, you find you find the order or the nature of the kingdom. That's what that's what we begin to see. Now, if we if if we put the works of man under under a magnifying glass, they look more crude and that's more right. uh, right. and with with less design. Uh, we we hear people say, "Well, it looks good from thirty feet away." <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that. But the more you put the more you put the works of God under the magnifying glass of faith, the the more wonderful it looks. Yeah. Uh, that's how things are. So lastly, I wanted to leave you thinking about this. <clears throat> Look beyond the miracle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't be distracted by just the miracle itself. Yeah. Yes, amen. Look beyond the miracle. Don't miss the Savior yes. for the miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want the miracle to bring you to the Savior. Yeah. And then, you, then, you, then you'll have the, the, the most benefit from the miracle and the benefit of the Savior. But to miss the Savior for the miracle, well, let me just put it this way. Lazarus died again. Mm -hmm. But he didn't miss the Savior yeah. for the miracle. Mm -hmm. So let us look beyond the miracle and abide in him.